Today we're talking to Mark Lapidus, who is the CEO of Amadeo. Mark, thank you for speaking with me today. First question I have for you is, 380 sales have been slow. What are your thoughts on the reason for slow sales in the program? They've been very slow and we haven't been able to get any new customers in 2014 uh, into the stable, but I think it'll change in 2015. Uh, I think it's a multi-dimensional question. There are simple reasons for it. If you look at what British Airways is doing with the aircraft, which is consolidating existing traffic onto an A380, where they replace three 747s or a combination of 747s and 777s, uh, they would fly to LAX three times or to Miami with an A380. They get tremendous cost benefit savings from it. We basically are in the process of making sure other airlines understand the numbers of the A380 to probably figure out the benefits. And when we look at these numbers, uh, you know, if you replace roughly the same capacity, two triple sevens can fly for you with one A380. We see annual cost benefits to an airline of about $30 million. But that requires this airline to fully appreciate and understand seating capacity of the A380, which we're sometimes struggling with and have certainly struggled in the past with the existing operators who have put way few to seats into the aircraft. I mean, uh, Korean Airlines 408 seat configuration you know, is missing about 150 seats for the same level of comfort if they just use the space properly. So we're spreading uh, the understanding to the airlines that haven't looked at it, what A380 seating actually is. And when we look at a four-class aircraft, we have 590 seats on an A380 in exactly comparable comfort with the same ratios for galleys or toilets. You know, we have a 7779X uh, sitting about uh, 341 folks, and in the 300 hour it's only 306. As we go down the scale from 4 class to 3 class, we have exactly the same phenomena. Seating increases on aircraft in general, but uh, uh, A380 has tremendous advantage. So a 3 class A380 would take 602 people, 3 class 777X 357, and 300R 320. The economics of not just advantage to the unit cost, but advantage to annual operation are very significant, but it takes time to get the fleet managers to fully appreciate it, think about the routes where they do not need connectivity of extra frequencies, or where that connectivity doesn't have that much value, and there are plenty big trunk routes where that is the case. And that has not been necessarily how the aircraft has been sold in the past. So uh, this is something that has been our number one challenge. Challenge number two is to focus on growing the traffic in the way Emirates does it, and this is traffic stimulation. And there what we're running into difficulties with airlines is how they promote themselves, how their revenue management departments are completely separate and independent and do not talk to the marketing departments. And when people look at opening up a new route or growing a route, and there isn't a combined effort in the way we see Emirates does it in terms of promoting the brand creating marketing and, and having the brand revenue management work with this. An example would be uh, opening up Boston with the 777 that Emirates has done. And before they open up Boston, they uh, support both New Zealand that goes into American's Cup, that goes into the final. It sails in San Francisco Bay for two weeks and all of America watches it. Uh, and uh, the boat New Zealand is called Boat Emirates. It does cost a little bit of money to do that but the results for Emirates and for the route are significant and uh, investment is recouped very quickly. So educating airlines about the stuff is what we're focusing on. So when you talk about British Airways, Willie Walsh has made the point that he likes the 380 very much, but he likes only having 12 of them. Using the BA as an example, do you think that in fact, despite what, what uh, BA says now, they actually will need to grow that fleet? I think down the road they will. I think BA is, is approaching this in a logical and systematic way. They have mapped out the 12 aircraft, but I think the rate of introduction uh, and how many potential routes they can do, this cost saving with A380 is increasing. Uh, I think they haven't yet, uh, but probably will put more A380s where in the past they felt they needed more cargo capacity, like Hong Kong, where they have so far only one flight, um, but the revenue uh, that they get from passengers will far exceed the benefits that extra cargo can give you on a triple seven. So the obvious next question, in, it's a follow-up to that, is the looking down the road, looking towards the future of the 380 program, there's been a lot of talk about a 380neo. 
What are your thoughts on, on this concept? Is it, is it, does it have merit? Uh, look, uh, we're excited about the prospect of NEO in the future. Uh, I think it will be amazing aircraft. It probably should be neo and considered to be stretched at the same time. But before that aircraft can get to that level of uh, you know, conceptual acceptance by the airlines, airlines have to figure out how to fly 550 seat aircraft in, in its current form. Um, oil price clearly has been probably something that will play a factor in terms of how Airbus and everybody else will think about NEO. And if it is looking during the course of this year that we're going to have fairly low oil prices for considerable many years to come, one has to take a careful look if NEO is necessary. Because the, you know, the extra benefit of the engine that would need to be developed and maybe become available in the 2020 plus time frame uh, is reduced by the drag, by the extra weight. So you need to do other improvements on aircraft, whether there are dynamic improvements. Uh, I think the best improvement you can get would be the stretch. Uh, increased number of seats and then the cost would be totally unbelievable in terms of unit cost for this plane. Uh, but uh, at this point of time we think that uh, existing aircraft will be very successful irrespective of what will happen with the decision to create a new and existing aircraft will be still providing better unit cost economics than anything flying today or what will be flying in the future uh, because of the reasons we discussed. You know, if you put number, the right number of seats on the aircraft, the unit costs are unbeatable by 9x or by the uh, A350-1000. So the, the, the stages really are optimize the CO and that takes you easy to 20, early 20s and then once you've optimized the, the, the deployment of how you, when I say deployment, I mean utilizing the space. Oh, I think that's correct. And optimizing the CO and, and getting through the value of this aircraft to the airlines that has not reached everybody. Emirates gets it, British Airways gets it, but others who should be having this aircraft have not yet gone into it. And I think once that happens, when there is acceptance how to use this plane, it will become quite a strong argument to develop a NEO. And, and, and exactly how it will be done, there are different scenarios that may play out. But, uh, you know, we sort of think a NEO uh, in the 2020 time frame would be a very beneficial development for the BLA sector. It's interesting when we look at the, the classic argument has always been Airbus focuses on concentration and hub-to-hub -hub traffic, you know, the, 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 the mega city, and Boeing is focused on the fragmentation. And yet we see Emirates is able to use the 380 on secondary route like Dubai, Manchester? Twice daily now. Um, well, I think in the case of Emirates, they understand stimulating traffic in a way nobody else has caught on to. Um, but neither fragmentation nor hub to hub is the right expression. I mean, the business has very big routes and that will continuously grow and they will grow as fast if not faster than anything else. And it will also continue to grow in, in an area where smaller planes can go a longer distance and take passages from secondary cities. Both coexist and will coexist successfully, and within that space, uh, you know, there will be significantly large need for VLAs, and A380 is the VLA of choice in the future. Thank you.